Here's my 09 Pontiac Vibe. Check this car out. Whoa! What the f***? <laughs> so we got a little bit of a hiccup in my pickup. Oh, not really a pickup, but... Yeah, so kind of was doing some donuts and some power sliding on the new property and kind of, what do they say on those YouTube things? Oh, bud, I think I sent her a little too hard this time or something like that. So that's exactly what happened. She got sent a little too hard, but now we have to fix it because, man... I just painted this thing like six months ago. Come on. But anyway, this whole quarter got caved in, slid into the weeds, hit my skid steer attachment, put a nice hole in that. It was that night. I was over there kind of ripping some, ripping some wraps and screwed her up pretty good. And since the, actually like right after it happened, I popped this out with a pry bar. That's why it looks like that. And this door cap here was really bad. Like it was like that wide and then by the time I pulled everything back. But I figured, you know what, I'll do a video on this because I am a, you know, pretty experienced body man, all jokes aside. And hey, if somebody could learn something off of these skills, then let's make a video out of it. A video. Alright, let's get started. It's like the first thing I gotta do is get that hole welded up and... See where we're at. I already got a new tail light. So I fixed this junk, junk, junk tail light out of the junkyard, out of a car that like, this car was crazy. I wish I took a picture of it. It looked like a fire extinguisher blew up inside of it. It was, it was just disgusting. Uh, but yeah, I got this. That's literally the only one I can find. So I had to buy that, but I got to get this junk tail light out of here and fit that one and kind of see where our damages we got some damage there where the tail light goes and some there it's kind of screwed up so start with the tail light and then we're going to work our way that way and kind of figure out figure out what we got to do so let's get this piece of junk out of here and put this piece of junk in now well, better put you guys on a tripod better take these off I don't think it's gonna go in with them on there yeah. Man. <laughs> hey what actually it looks like it's gonna go right in actually goes right in pretty darn good. Yeah. All right, when you're doing body work, sometimes you just gotta get outright brutal with stuff. So this whole area right here needs to be pushed out. So I'm gonna take my hatchet or ax right here, I'm gonna get inside with the handle and give her hell. I see you looking at the faces I make when I'm hammering that. It's time consuming, guys. I should have a dolly, but of course I don't have one here. It's at the shop I work at. Kind of got to hammer the whole thing out and then push the excess back in kind of thing. 
All right, change of plans. I actually had this here. I forgot I had this. I haven't used it in forever. Yeah, there we go. Got all these cool tools. All right, this is going to make life so much easier. A stud gun or a polar would be nice on this, but I ain't got that here either, so that's definitely not here. We're going to make do with that. All right, so there's, I mean, it, I'm not going to go on a 10 minute, this is not like a schooling lesson. This is basically like watch what I'm doing kind of thing. So there's a body line that goes right there. You can see it going down the whole car. So I'm going to use this one here on this to kind of get that body line back. I'm going to hammer and dolly this. This is a little high right here. I don't know how it looks on video, but you can see we're already kind of getting the shape back right here. This is all bulged right out, and, and it's real hard to see on video. But basically, there's about an hour of just hammer and dolly in this thing. Then I gotta weld that hole up. But that is coming out nice. Got a lot of crap going on down in there. to get the welder and weld this crack up. I cannot stress this enough. This is not a like 100 point way you're supposed to do it for all you keyboard cowboys out there. This is an everyday driver. This is not a show car. This is not what you do on a 72 Chevelle. This is not what you do on a 73 Duster not what you do on a Plymouth Roadrunner. It's not what you do on a Yanko Camaro. It's an everyday driver. All right, so now that we got that hopefully settled, we're gonna weld this thing up. This is a really hard spot to try to get into with any kind of tools that I have available. I'm not a full blown out body shop here. I do not have all the cool tools. Ideally, I would love to get behind this and hammer and dolly it nice and flat before I weld it. But we're not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to spend 16 hours on this. This is going to get done tonight. However, it's kind of like if you got a everyday driver car like this and something like this happens and you want to fix it quick yourself, this is what you do. Anyway, we're going to get that welded up.
got our butcher job all welded up. Looks like crap. Some dough over it. We're gonna look pretty good. So always want to make sure you wire brush your welds really good, otherwise you can get bubbles. Probably get bubbles anyway, because this is a hack job. going on here it's just about time to make butcher job look even worse it's like Carl's body shop over here Carl's body shop that's a story for another day all right, I ain't really got too much time to blab here because we got to get moving this stuff's gonna dry quick when you get into your welds and stuff man you want to smush this right in there hard like break your wrist hard. Kind of just want to get all the like deep pits and stuff with this. Anything that's really Duraglass is a lot stronger than Bondo. Push it right in there. Good, nice and hard. Man, you gotta work fast. You ain't got time to screw around. And this ain't gotta be perfect, this coat. This is basically just to kinda get you a little bit more on the playing field. starting to harden up here. good there always make sure you clean your squeegees off good put a little lacquer thinner on an old paper towel clean it off everybody says just leave the just leave the body filler on there it'll crack right off it will but then it'll leave little chunks on there unless you get a lot and then when you're bending your squeegee it's deforming it it's nice to have a nice straight squeegee for when you're doing nice work, not that this is nice work, but I use these squeegees for nice jobs. So there, now when you're ready to use it, it's ready to go and it's not all screwed up. All right, so it's pretty important to catch either Bondo or Duraglass in the perfect time, especially Duraglass, because it gets really hard. Kind of get it so you can almost peel it off with your fingernail and get an old piece of 36 grit. 
just kind of scuff it up. What that does is that scratches the oily surface off. And, well, not oily, but kind of shelled over surface and lets the air get in there. And it actually dries it faster. And all your spots where you don't really need it, like right here, it makes it come off so much easier than letting it dry for an hour and then sanding your ass off trying to get it off of places you don't need. You know, it's just kind of knocking off the high spots like that, just shaving it off. Let this harden right up good and then I'm going to DA it. I have this all DA'd, just kind of knocked it down. As you can see, this is a butcher job, once again, for the hundredth time. And it is still pretty rough, but we are getting the shape back. There's a indentation there, which <laughs> we have no problem keeping. And there's a body line here, and then you can see there's a body line there. So it's important to tape these body lines and you'll end up coming out with a pretty good job that way so I kind of just marked with my ruler and taped that body line and I eyeballed this one I taped that I got this all ready for some regular bondo at this point we're not oil canning at all so should be a pretty crappy job so we got like 16 gallons mixed up for this butcher job Start spreading it on. You ain't got to do it all in one coat. We're going to put a few coats on this. It's, it's usually better to do, you know, a few coats rather than one big, huge, heavy coat. Just, it usually comes out better. But when you're going over this Duraglass, it's the same thing. You want to pack it in there hard. You want to fill in all those little air pockets that are going to break your balls down the road and bubble the paint and I mean you want to push it in there you want to break your wrist almost so if you break your wrist don't come back and sue me but you want to push it in there hard just like I'm doing kind of do the whole thing first your whole work area you're working in work fast Then when you start to get it, then you want to kind of, that's when you want to start building it up a little bit. This is going to take quite a bit here. So I'm just kind of, kind of, just load her on and go again. Because when you got to, a dent this big, you can't be shy. You gotta, you gotta just pack her in, load it up. There's some real good body men out there that can take this, just about get this dent out without even putting any bondo in, but I'm not that good. We got a massive low spot right there that's going to be an issue but I'm actually pretty happy with this so 
and you get it where you're happy with it leave it alone because if you keep going you're just gonna you're gonna dig yourself in a hole <clears throat> so this is the cheese grater bondo file whatever you want to call it and basically this is gonna save a lot of work sanding it's kind of kind of one of those satisfying things kind of just wait till the bondo is kind of just you can almost peel it off with your fingernail and this is kind of a technique that you really this this cheese grater is pretty old and wore out my good ones are all at work but you just kind of shape it you carve you carve the shape out you want and you hold it flat so you can get nice flat job the whole thing we're trying to do is make this straight straight that way actually we're going to get this door opened up here get a razor blade and just cut this crap off got a nice line right there now we're just going to shape this we're not taking all the body filler off we're just shaping it we're just kind of Saving some work for ourselves down the road. You can easily spend a lot of time. You could easily spend eight hours just hammering and dollying this mess. Like I said, for for my duster, I mean the the time that I have in my duster is is crazy. There. We still have a long ways to go yet. A lot of bundle. But we're going to let that harden up and we'll block it. All right, we are ready to start blocking this. You want to get a brand new nice piece of sandpaper. Totally just put my hand right in that fresh bundle. I don't know if I'm going to do it. That's the best way to do it right there because that's not... That spot wasn't too bad. Take long strokes. You want to get this stuff while it's soft. Not wicked soft, but you want to get it before it hardens right up. Save yourself so much work. Dig it right off. going to sand it all the way off though a lot of a lot of mistakes beginners make is putting bondo on and sanding it all off it's not the objective That is it for that spot as you can tell we got we're gonna do that same exact thing um you know probably at least two or three more times before we get close this one here i'm gonna it's basically doing the same thing you know now i'm gonna tape that line and tape that line i'm gonna bondo that but first i'm gonna bondo this again and basically just working it the same i mean I really can't say, you know, without doing hands-on training with someone or, you know, kind of thing, you know, this is exactly what you got to do and it'll come out right. It's just a matter of feel. You just have to shape it, you know, it, it just comes with, comes with time. Um, but I mean, the tape trick and, you know, eventually by the time, and I'll, I'll have the camera rolling again, by the time I get to where I'm getting happy with this, I'm actually going to be using this long board right here. What that'll do is give me a nice straight line, but for just roughing it in, the regular block is is just fine because we got quite a bit more dough to spread on here.
Next day progress. It's getting there. This part here is done. Done enough. Got that line back there that was kind of messed up. And yeah, so this part here is I'm I'm finished with that. That's that's good enough. This one here, this is a first coat on this one. <clears throat> this one here is probably gonna need hopefully one more coat. And then lastly I'll I'll do this piece here down here, but other than that, it is coming out pretty darn good. So I'm gonna longboard this and kind of see where I'm at with that. And then see you what I'm going to do next. We've been blocking and sanding and bondoing for probably another four hours and I'm pretty happy with it. Hard to see on camera but pretty much got every spot. So this is all blocked with 36 grit. I kind of went around with a piece of sandpaper kind of like so and just cleaned up you know all the all the edges and everything there's still a couple little areas i gotta kind of fine tune yet but kind of just cleaned up all the edges i got these body lines wicked straight on this thing that one and then i got this one back pretty good kind of disappears down in the bumper cover but anyway <clears throat> it is time to block this with 80 grit we're not really gonna take a whole lot off, just kinda basically just knock down the 36 grit scratches because if you go too far, you're, you'll screw it up. So basically just kinda like five minutes for the whole thing, just block the whole thing with 80 grit on the longboard to get all the heavy stuff out. But before we do that, it is very important, especially if you got a really nice car you're working on, at this point, before you primer it obviously and before you go too far, you want to fit all your stuff, your bumper cover, your light, your door, which door, I mean, it lines up pretty good, so we're good there. But we wanna put the new tail light in and uh, kinda clip the bumper cover back on and just kinda, kinda look at where we're at before we go too far here, so we'll do that now. Start with the bumper cover, cause that's already here. tape off here. Good. I'm not going to clip it on all the way just because these clips like to break. So I'm going to touch that up a little bit more on the bottom here and I'm going to be happy with that. So we're good there. Now we will put our light in quick. Just set it in and see how that fits. with that 
That gap's not 100% perfect, but I tell you, it's it's pretty darn good. So I can I can live with that. You know, it's pretty decent around. I mean, right? Honestly, it's <laughs> honestly it's really nice now that I'm looking at it. This is the first time it was in, so just got to touch that little corner up there with some sandpaper, and then that one. And yeah, we're good. This fits really nice. And I noticed on the other side, this body line that goes all the way down the car actually comes right where that red part meets the black. So there's the body line right there. So we're in good shape. So I'm going to pop this out. Blocker with 80, and we'll start masking this thing off for primer. Man, guys, if you're, real, if you're still watching this video, I'm surprised because this has got to be the most boring video like ever made just watching me sand but i mean i'm hoping somebody might get something out of it it's hard to make bodywork videos because all you do is sand and spread bondo and wait for bondo to dry and hammer stuff it's just boring but it's fun watching it come back to life, though. She is all masked off and ready for primer. I just sprayed a thin coat of etch primer on it. Didn't really have to because I'm using epoxy primer on this. My favorite kind of primer is this finish one, this filler primer for this stuff. However, I didn't realize it until just now that I don't have enough to do this, which really sucks because this stuff, this stuff is awesome. This stuff here, epoxy primer, it's kind of more of a, kind of like a one coat sand over it and paint it kind of thing. It's not necessarily a filler primer. Filler primers kind of fill the scratches in and you can use epoxy for that, but it's not ideal. But this is all I got, so we're gonna use it anyway and we'll be okay. But yeah, if you're doing something like this, do yourself a favor and and buy a gallon of that or a half gallon whatever that stuff's awesome but anyway we're ready for primer so let's mask up here because we're not going to be able to keep our six foot rule from this gun is loaded up and we're ready to go
All right, there's our first coat. This is where you kind of see where the body lines come to life. Look at that nice crisp body line right there. Got that one. This one here is pretty good. A little wonky there, but it's all right. This one around the wheel well is beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. So just going to do the same thing. I'm going to put like, you know, probably flash time in between coats, probably like 10 minutes. Basically just keep touching it until, you know, it's kind of a little tacky. And just put as many coats on it as it takes to kind of fill the scratches and we'll get back done. Well, there is about five coats of primer on this. <clears throat> Should be thick enough to where I can sand it and paint it, but there's some pretty good pits in it, like right here and stuff. So I might have to just block this with with like 180 and then reprimer it and then block it again but I'm not gonna worry about that right now till I let this dry for a few days I'm actually gonna unmask the car and probably drive it for a week or two and then get it back in the shop because I am out of time right now and I need the car and this is the only vehicle I really have other than the truck so so yeah, it's going to do it good to dry anyway, rather than, I mean, there's nothing more I could do on it for today. This would at least have to dry overnight, and if it dries for a couple days, especially how thick I put this on, it's going to be even better yet. So let's get this thing unmasked. don't look too bad especially now that we can see all our lines and everything looks just like it did before like six months ago half the car was all primer just like this <laughs> I was just like it again man oh sucks I could have put all this work into my duster but whatever it is what it is at least it wasn't too bad. It would have been better if it was a door, then I could have just replaced the door. But luckily it was only one panel. So, and it luckily, you know, it was actually pretty easy considering what could have been. So, I could have broke the bumper cover and, you know, bend the door and the quarter. So, whatever. It looks good. It's pretty simple repair. Alright, tail light fit in pretty good. Looks very good. Pretty happy with the gap. Bumper cover fit on nice. Beautiful. This is a junkyard tail light. So maybe you guys can tell me if it works or not. Well, I guess we don't have brake lights, do we? I guess we, uh... What is that now? That is the... Is this one? I guess I better see if I can use this one. All right, let's see if that one works. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, looks like we got lights and everything. Good, good. All right. All right, guys, I haven't decided if I'm just gonna make two videos or if I'm just gonna wait and make one big video with the whole paint and everything. But in case I decide to just make this a separate video other than the other one, thanks for watching. And we'll see you when we paint it.